every rustle and chirp becomes a note in the symphony of change, inviting humanity to sway with the cadence of progress. something a bit different this evening um, I thought I'd have a kind of listening party with some live visuals if ever, hopefully everything will work out listening through the new planetary drift volume 1 compilation which I lots of my favourite artists and creators from YouTube and, and other artists in their own right So I've got some visuals running in uh, Max for Live device called Zwobot. I'll show you how it's all working afterwards, but hopefully it'll uh, run without problem. And you can enjoy some trivia visuals. A sparky optrix. So first up this is Grooving in G, time and space. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's brilliant. Particularly love this track. I love all of them actually. Just rehearsing, kind of practicing this, and uh, really enjoying just like doing visuals and listening to all the tunes. space. through a few times already old new school vibes all day makes for great background music background music for doing whatever to yeah indeed good driving music i always think that's kind of what i make like driving slash tripping slash after party music <laughs> so i'm doing all the visuals live in swobot which is like a max for live visualizer Surprised it's holding up. Hopefully it looks all right at home.
just going to play the tunes out in full. I'm not going to do any mixing or anything. I'm not that good. I will talk about them. So that was Grooving in G, Time and Space. It's interesting, I actually heard that, like, um, before it was submitted uh, for release, I think George might have sent it to me. Um, it's interesting, like, the subtle changes he made before before it went on the final, the final release. And actually, I, I did take some direct inspiration uh, from the, like, little melodic flourishes at the end of the phrase, the end of phrases that he was doing. Um, thought they were just sounded so gorgeous. Uh, yeah, but that was grooving in G, time and space. Next up, we got Fort Forms N1R. Oh, thanks, James. Yeah, it's all happening. Like you'll probably see, you'll probably see this similar video clips happen happen a few times because I've only got like a this is, this is something of a test really actually to see how how the stream holds up with like live visuals being generated in real time in Ableton. I'll, I'll show you how I'm doing it afterwards. Sparky Optrix it is, yeah. He gave me a really nice shout out on that as well. I was really touched. Bought forms M1R. Yeah, I really like this kind of like techie one from Fort Forms. Discord, links in the description for the uh, track feedback stream. I do get round to everything, eventually. I like to think I'm pretty organised so I don't miss anyone if they've submitted stuff, even if it's like a, a way out from when the next feedback stream is, but please, yeah, that'd be great. And thanks. Thanks about the visuals, yeah, I'm glad they're holding up. I'd really like to do track feedback streams with this going on. I think this would be really cool, with like people's music. Yeah, like the fort, fort forms that you know, I stole that like pad, the pad thing. It's done really well that video.
was Fort Forms, N1R. Yeah, I really like the kind of like techy rhythm on that. Like the kind of chopped program drums and all the atmospheres and kind of like chunky an- uh, analog bass. The next up is uh, IGO. Uh, and this track is Singularity, the Amen mix. IJO is is another jungle YouTuber. Um Ruben and G turn me on to his stuff. Makes kind of like a lot of uh stuff with real samplers and stuff. The proper way. <laughs> I'd love to get one one day, maybe. Dragon FM oi oi. I think you enjoy this. Can you get this on the projector somehow or something? I should have put a warning really about flashing lights. If anyone has any uh, sensitivity to flashing images, this will contain lots of them, so please beware. Love this one. Love like the kind of looping break portions. Yeah, the face sounds wicked. It's got a slight square pressure vibe with these chords too. Thank you. 
for IGO Singularity Amen Mix. Really love the breaks in that. Moody. Yes, yeah, so next up is my track for the compilation, Solar Hardware. Gresh, Eamon is simult simultaneously wicked and chill. I have time balancing that feeling with making my own stuff. Yeah. I think it's like the tempo. tempo it's quite, quite a slow tempo, that tune. I guess there's not much going on in the rest of the tune either. You know, it's, it's quite sparse and, and it's, you know, to its uh, to its benefit. I think it can be easy to like, you know, get a bit ambitious. <laughs> I want the milkman to bring some amens in the morning. Has yeah. that got amens in that tune? Can't, can't remember. I'll probably, if there's time and I have energy, I'll do, I'll tr just jump into the session for this tune at the end as well. Sparky up tricks, I think the choice of kick from the break has a massive impact on the vibe for sure. I love the like, the really tough one, like a bar and a half out from the end. That's my f in the Amen break. I think we're talking about. I don't know what I'm doing with these visuals. It's all a bit like improvised. But this looks this looks cool. That's fine.
yeah so it's like it's quite interesting working on that one because um it kind of came about i think i started it at christmas or like one of the days over christmas or some kind of holiday session i'm just at the kitchen table messing around with lunaris the synth and uh i just left it for like a month or so and then our colleges was in touch about submitting something for this and this this kind of just seemed like the right tune uh to put forward so yeah i'll talk more about it afterwards next up is our colleges this is coma the fanu remix i love this one I love what um, like Fanu does with like the acid part that comes in towards the end, like after the breakdown, it's sick. It's got like Aphexy vibes at the start here. Sounds really close that comes in. Spoke, I think it's. Open your eyes. Hit that. That's sick. space.
almost all of the guys on this tape before there were any collabs happening. Jungle's coming back in a nice little way. I love it. Yeah, it's. It feels like um, it feels like really surreal to to have these like collaborations across across the world, essentially, you know, and across time too, you know. Um, and it feels like really magic, actually, to be to be part of that. Um, I completely agree. And James, yeah, they they totally are um, the the cherry on top. Like I'll often, you know, it's quite easy to, or it's it's relatively straightforward to like get the bare bones of a track, you know, in terms of like breaks or whatever whatever you're kind of going for. But that thing that makes it human, you know, it can often be just that right sample, can't it? You know, um, which is why it's worthwhile to always be just like listening for listening out to where you can bolster your sample library with 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 the right kind of sounds this one's eschaton i think i'm pronouncing that right or eschaton this is biogenetics there's an interesting mix of stuff on this as well like tempos as well Top Shell Fives, yeah, that's a sick track, that Fanu one. Shout out to Arcologies for like putting it all together, for masterminding the thing, you know. visualizer here simulation
got that this lush kind of new age breakdown. kind of like phasey resonator FM kind of synth plucky thing hey George Ruin and G super inspiring hearing all these again with the visuals need to get back in the studio and make more yeah, man, I think I'm, yeah, I feel the same. I've, li- I've listened to your track a lot in the, today especially, kind of prepping for this. Was was telling how essentially, like, you know, stole bits from it um, after listening to it. Yeah, me too, man. I was going to texture, but um, this is a uh, submotion. Internal shifts. I tell you what, George. Though, yeah, I'm having a great time, kind of just listening to them all and doing doing these visuals in Max for Live with with them. This is a bit of a test run to kind of see how that how the computer holds up. But I think it's okay. I think it's more about the stability in Max as opposed to like the the laptop.
the, this this is a a, a suite called Swobot. It's Max for Live device. Um, it's like a suite of of Max effects and stuff. Oh, if if you stick around, if you're if you're free and for a bit more longer, I'll, I'll kind of show what it's all doing. I don't really. I just use the devices. I wouldn't say you know. I've got no idea how Max works really, but and they're all audio generative and audio reactive. It'd be worth it just for this, to be fair. Hey, Tom Tom. Fresh big up. Cheers for that. A lot of love for George. Cheers, Ruben and G, thanks a lot. Play me, thanks very much. It's quite good when you find like, sort of like a, a setting that kind of works and is holding up okay. I'm sure if you've been around for it, you would have seen the underground clip coming already. But. Love the groove on this one. for deep jungle and DB. Can you walk the dog to it? Is it like a, a, a movie in your head? kind of new agey textures on this like the flutes and stuff I always think about drum and bass odysseys. I think those times were quite formative, you know, listen, with you. Uh, Wagon FM is a, is a friend of mine, has been for a long time, and he's subjected me to a lot of drum and bass and jungle 
I guess I've picked it up. I picked it up by osmosis from him. Big up Rugged FM. Submotion, internal shifts. Really like that. I could see that that being a proper good like 4 a.m. track, 7 a.m. track. That's a deep tune. That. Uh, next up is Lunanescence, and this is Shirakawa. It has got a kind of Japanesey Eastern feel to this. I heard uh, The Morning Factory for the first time recently. I can't remember who that's by about my playlist, but... That's a sick late night house tune. the bass in this one. 
proper like rolling and groovy. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. That bass line would be people on a big rig. It's really bumping. Gresh, that's what we're all after, isn't it, really? Yeah, love that one. That's Lunanescent Shirakawa. There's something about the like the funky drummer. It's quite fast tempo as well. It's like the and with that that bumping kind of rolling bass line. I could just see that really going deep late on in the evening. Nice. Okay, this uh, the next one is Mark Renton, who's another uh, YouTuber. I think he he kind of did a. Uh, did a little video on the tape release as well last week, and this tune is called Nat R. <laughs> That's another good sample. Good the light, the light, the light. Yeah, that last one was a proper roller. Yeah. I think this has got like a pretty interesting groove as well. Thank you. 
Mark Renton. Check the dolphin noises or whatever. Mark Renton, Nat R. Uh, last tune of the compilation. This is by Arcologies himself. And this one's called Suspended Simulation. Great title. Arcologies is great for the whole kind of world building thing. It's actually a student kind of turned me on to his stuff. Um, and I thought Arcologies, what a wicked name. Love the whole Arcology's vibe, really. Everything they touch is uh, magic, really.
Ya Rafa Yeah, totally. I'd love them when the little James Brown shout on the pink break. we go that was uh that was planetary drift in full uh with live visuals provided by its robot uh i'm got i made it all the way through without it crashing because it crashed loads earlier on um i'm gonna have to sort out my uh, camera just a second but um yeah big up to all the artists involved that sounded that was really fun that was really great doing that uh, okay, I'm just going to have to like sort myself out a bit. Um, get my webcam rolling. There we go. Give me a second to move a few things around. Uh, I can talk to you about what, what this is. <sighs> yeah cheers everyone thanks Benjamin. thanks grooving in g yeah that was good wasn't it <laughs> so the, i certainly enjoyed doing that i love i can i'll open up this thing this like visualizer and uh i got it years ago on my like my old mac and it just couldn't run it wasn't capable of running and um now this this kind of laptop flies with it really and i can lose hours just kind of making these kind of crazy crazy effects change essentially it's like a max for live device a suite of devices called swobot and it's kind of like a, a video mixer that's playing on these two um kind of video decks it actually stopped playing this one towards the end but i didn't want to mess with it in case it crashed uh and then it's kind of got all these various effects that are like audio audio reactive uh and <laughs> You know, these kind of, uh, these will work along with the, uh, the kind of video footage that's, that's playing. It's a great, uh, great bit of kit, actually. I think it's pretty reasonably priced as well. It's like an independent developer. And you can just kind of trigger these things on and off. And then I was using the... There's kind of kaleidoscope effects and various things like this, and it's all audio reactive. Yeah, cheers, Gresh. Cheers, Wagon. That was what's doing it. So this is something I'd like to do for my 
when I do like track feedback streams, kind of get all the just just add to the immersion a bit, you know. Particularly if there's art like I'd, I wouldn't mind like showcasing artists as well who'd kind of finished tunes or, or had particular breakthroughs as a result of being part of it, and to kind of showcase them with some cool cool things to watch. It's a really, really great device, and there's only like a, a kind of there's tons of these effects that run into it. Um, and like, if I wasn't doing a live stream, because like as soon as you got OBS, it does kind of affect the frame rate that it outputs. But if you're just recording the screen, it's it's fine. Um, it does about sixty frames per second, so it's like really crisp visuals. But it's got loads of these effects modules, tons tons of them and uh yeah it's it's really fun so i'm gonna i I will i'll just jump into like uh my tune jump into solar hardware i can let me kind of do a bit of a trap breakdown or just uh show how it was made I think listening to all of those though, they they sound, you know, they sound there's like a freshness but um a nostalgia as well. I think just with some of like the tempos and some of the choice of instruments, like that luminescent Shirakawa, I think that really I think yeah, like just kind of it's kind of quite fast and um In a good way, you know, like it sounds sounds modern, like they they sound modern, but with a nod to the past. Um, okay. See, so yeah, I just opened this solar hardware project. Yeah, so I started this in December last year, and I I worked on it. I only worked on it like three times, and that was because the kind of like if I open the, the I'll open the first. The first version of it um you can hear this mix continuously and like uh, ad free i think as well on the 4am breaks channel and when i saw it was going to be on there i think i discovered 4am breaks probably four or five years ago um when i was kind of getting into making jungle a lot and uh i just thought it was like yeah magic and had a lot of the stuff that like Uh, we used to listen to or we listened to used to listen to at parties and after parties and stuff like that um and loads of really cool mixes and yeah that and ambience the channel ambience that's another good like 90s and y2k you, you know early noughties drum and bass and jungle uh channel on youtube but yeah 4 a.m breaks and i was like oh i'd love to have one day maybe i'll have a track on there or some tracks yeah this this was the first session i seem to remember that i did start this just at the kitchen table when i had my kids i think it was like a i think they were probably like watching a film or something and i was um i just had a little jam and i had you know recently got this the lunaris contact instrument which is like a pad thing so it's all over that tune this this lunaris um it's just what we got you know this was the first idea this like sustained chord it's like a major seventh chord c major seventh like the most you know basic jungle archetype really And then on another instance of Lunaris as well. I used the... Uh, this is the first preset from it called 2049. It's kind of like a Vangelis sounding synth. You know, lead on the synth. And I just played this on my... Um, on my like laptop keyboard just with the you know all the is all, there's no sharps or flats because it's in c it's in a minor essentially so you can just play all the like 
ASDFGHJKL on your keyboard. It's all going to sound reasonably in tune. And then it's got this kind of like bobbling synth going along, you know. Um. Yeah, Gresh, I, I noticed that as well. Yeah, it's just kind of like a static channel now, isn't it? Maybe ran out of things to post. This is another... So when I get a new synth, like one thing I like to do is just make t- t- as many tracks as I can with like just presets. I just I just like use as many instances of it as as I as I want to, and just like get used to kind of the sound of it and the presets. And to be honest, like something like Lunaris, this contact synth, I would never, I wouldn't try and program anything in it. I'd just use the presets because. Um, Because they're so good and there's so many of them and they're all just pads. They're all kind of pad sounds. It's definitely worth like the hundred dollars or whatever it is if you're into your pads and stuff. Um, particularly like these soundscapes and just all of them. It's got presets from State Azure, who's like an ambient live streamer as well. Really like State Azure. Uh and so that was, so it's three instances of that and maybe another like pad as well. So it was all building up the pads first. Yeah, again, just like the Lunaris. And I, I would have done it all in in session view, you know, just kind of building up these blocks of ideas. Uh, and then the break sounds quite different. I'd, I'd kind of been kind of, you know, like in my free time, I like to... Uh, not like get much of it, but when when I do, I'll often just dive into like something new or something that I'm trying to work on in, in my music. And one thing is like kind of making break making breaks from lots of other breaks and lots of unusual breaks. And I kind of would make this you know, this break from a groove in G break. So I kind of like just process them in weird ways, and I think, uh, and then kind of resample them and just stick them in my sample library. Oh, that's sick. That's really cool. Which one was it, Gresh? Was it under the, was it under Gresh? So I just pulled in all these kind of break samples. This isn't doing anything, this channel. Um, yeah, but these were made just like resample breaks that I'd made. And then just like an eight-way, eight-way bass and some weird... some weird stuff this is probably things i sampled myself from like youtube stuff like this yeah that's from like a new age cassette that i found on like a new age mix as is this Uh, and then and then this kind of radio chatter just to add texture at this point so so that was it and then i would have done a jam with this just at the just at the table I would have just like record, you know, um, stop and record. You know, you've you've seen me do it before. Stream with uh, with my APC Mini. From a GoLab patch, uh, I did a stream with GoLab, GoLab's devices. Who, uh, yeah, he's he's active in the chat a lot um, and follows the channel. Uh, and he's he's made some really nice like DMB and Jungle presets and Ableton devices. I think they're available on Bandcamp. 
So um, if you search on my channel for like GoLab, exactly like that, then you'd find the video I did on it and links to links to their band camp. But um, the 808 bass was one of theirs. Quite distorted, you know. Um, okay, I'll open the next... The next version of it. I'm surprised that I... So I think I was like, and, and then I just listened back to it a few months later and um, it kind of the timing fell when I caught Arcology was putting together the compilation and I thought that that that, that could be a really good one. It's got that kind of vibe um, for what he was talking about. Yeah, it's called Where. Thank you. I will check that out. Uh, and then this must have been... Yeah, a lot more. I seem to remember I had quite a bit of difficulty with the drums because I didn't really like how, um, you know, by this point it was quite developed. Essentially, I spent a few hours just kind of like, I knew how it wanted, how I wanted it to be after listening back to it and I was able to just kind of do it all in one go. It was probably like four hours work or something. I did the usual thing, I just made like a list and kind of went through everything until it was all in the project. But this is where I add, added things like the diva samples. Uh, and I also added in the kind of bongos and the percuss percussive elements, which are very Seba, really. Ableton Spirit Kit, which is Percussion Spirit Kit, I think it's this. But as you'll see, the brakes are quite different, as you'll hear. So the, like the bass moves around a bit as well, like I kind of change the bass pattern as the track goes on, so it's got kind of interest. But I I, I found I was I found the the break too distorted. to like unfold and then have a switch essentially so a kind of easy format you know with some additional breaks in it so i just kind of dipped into my library of breaks and just but i think the percussion really makes it with those dum, dum, dum. keep it simple really in terms of like you know more about the melodic ideas and stuff and then in the final version I kind of dealt with the break and I added in some like melodic flourishes after hearing George's work I was like I've got to I felt so inspired hearing that I was like I've got to do I've got to do something I've got to steal that <laughs> I've, got to, 
I'm going to steal that idea. And see if it doesn't sound like I've stolen it, if you know what I mean. I'm kind of just taking, taking inspiration. So I just load the final version and then... I think Mark Renton, when he did his... Um, he did his little listening video. He he talked about my drums specifically. Was was interested in how I'd uh, how I'd put them together. Don't tell me I've got missing samples. How? Um, yeah, and essentially, like, I spent a lot of time just kind of going through bar by bar and adding variation. It's, some people might find it tedious, but I find that's really where the magic is, actually. Uh, so I think I'll, I will put this on Patreon as well to anyone that follows me on there. So now I've changed the groove, I just kind of took it back to what it... I wanted that tight, clean... 90s sound, you know. quite a bit of time on like resampling stuff or bouncing it down so like I could make the mix really tight or like the arrangement really tight. again and again and kind of imagine imagine a drummer if I could play the drums what would I play like I played in bands for a long time so I've got a little drummer in the head that I kind of think of you know stuff like that like switching the groove all the time to keep the interest going by sounding programmed but not had these like switches switches just like think breaks I like just from my library of loops and stuff just like carving out silences, you know, just to kind of a tension and release. It was literally just that one break with lots of other percussion samples and bongos and kind of stock devices like that. And then the groove just, it's like this layered break that comes in. That's the sweet pea break that I kind of process to hell. But without it. So I kind of, I'll often just like get my ideas in one session. I kind of like building almost like a a sonic mood board. And then, um, you know, just cut, like, as long as I've got the suggestion of it, it doesn't really matter if it's in the right place in the first, the first go of the tune. Um, it's rather that it's just in the sound world of the, of the track. Because I can always kind of come back and, and mess with it more. Uh, future world machines yeah you managed to snag one <laughs> i think they sold out pretty quickly 
I think mine's in the post. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting that. There was whispers there might be another run. But I don't wanna I don't wanna um build up expectations or create expectations, but that would that would be good. Um yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting mine too. It's my first physical release on any type of fixed media. So and so I'm really happy about that. That's really good. Um mastering wise, I kind of just did my my own mastering using pretty simple chain, Soothe. Um maybe we'll talk a bit about the mastering, you know. Soothe, just kind of quite low settings. I find it behaves really nicely with breaks actually soothes because they can be a bit resonant when they're re-pitched. Some EQ with some kind of gentle um, reduction around 160 and 495, the kind of usual places with a boost around 22. And then some kind of side compressor um, EQ. And that just kind of takes off EQs, the stereo information, the stereo field, rather than the mono stuff. You always have utility of bass mono on. Um, then this Sound Toys EQ, CQ it's called. Um, just of like another cut in the mid. And a boost, slight boost in the high. I can't profess to be an expert at mastering. I've just kind of done an enough of it on my own music that it doesn't sound awful so it's probably all right you know <laughs> i like the shadow hills compressor on the master bus so now i turn the mix up full i always have it in parallel i just blend it in that's with it on that's off I think it brings out like more of the kind of punch of the of the drums and and like the tr the transients. It's just in optical mode, so it's like a fixed. The the attack and the release kind of uh, depend on the audio that's being fed into it. You don't set those. Um, don't ask me how optical compressors work or hate on me for not understanding, but. I like the optical one because it's just less controls and it sounds good. It works. Um, and then you can you change various other parameters in this, like the. Uh, it's like wiring section, which is quite cool as well. I just left it in nickel for this. I don't have anything too heavy handed going on, though. You know, it's all just like uh, subtle. Couple of limiters, just shaving off a tiny bit of game before going into a clipper. And that's how it's kind of, the track's quite loud really. Our future world machines are sick. Glad you got one. You UK or US? Or Europe, I should say Europe or US, really. Yeah, but that's my kind of basic mastering chain. There's another limiter there just to kind of... Because I'm concerned that I don't want... I don't want it to be hitting zero because I don't want it to, like, digitally clip. That's 
my reasoning behind the habit having the limiter here. These are all just things that have seemed to work for me over time. I can't profess to be a professional or anything at this kind of stuff. Um, but I have done mixes for people with a sim similar kind of, kinds of mastering chains for all types of of kind of computer music and and had stuff on vinyl as a result of it. So it's kind of you know it's probably fine. <laughs> Ireland, nice. I, I think it might be Arcologies is actually posting them all out. Yeah, lots of stuff on the sends. I'm, I'm a bit, oh, sorry, the return channels. I'm a big, like, I have loads of stuff on returns because I love, like, blending in reverbs and stuff. A lot of Valhalla. Um... One thing I like to do is like use different room reverbs for different stuff. Got quite a long one there on the bongos. But it's different to the other drums, which is a bit tighter and, and more in the middle, so together. Yeah, that's totally, I love blending like spaces like this. Anything going to see, which is like a vintage verb. I suspect we have. Um, I love the Valhalla stuff. It 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 does just sound really good to my ears. Um, so have we got anything going to this or not? Or is it just? Oh yeah, we got this contact pad. Something going on here. Yeah, this was the thing that was kind of inspired by the grooving in G tune. Going to the Valhalla pad. Push the groove on at the end there. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry, data push. I misread your. I thought you had a question mark and an exclamation mark. Um, you don't bounce your tune and then master it. No, no. I I I know that's probably a bit naughty, but um, having done so, so when I was like. To go, to go back a bit, I used to, um, like, when my daughter was first born, I didn't have as much time to make music, or I was like, maybe it was shortly before this, but I remember thinking, I remember getting to the point where I was like, I was getting so far with my tunes, and, and I realised I didn't really know how to mix them, or I didn't really know anything about, like, audio balancing, or um, I didn't kind of know what to do once I'd had the musical idea and I was kind of creating, recording everything myself. I was a bit like, OK, I've kind of got this track, but, um, you know, it doesn't sound like the stuff that I'm as I got more and more into it. And, and you know, I'd always liked club music and music and everything and recorded in studios and stuff like that. But it's like it's almost like my ear became more attuned to like the fact that I was making it all myself in a computer and like hearing and then listening to like electronic music that I really liked and realizing there's a discrepancy here, a big one, you know, what is it? And it, it's like, actually, I really don't know how to make stuff sound good. I don't know what a compressor is. I'm putting it on everything, but I've got no idea of what it actually does. Um, you know, what, how do you, how do you mix? How do you master? Because I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have money that I could pay someone to mix my stuff and I wasn't good enough that, I wanted to do that. I wasn't happy enough with sending, with working that way. And so like I spent probably a couple of years just like consuming all the YouTube stuff I could and reading about it and kind of teaching myself like the the basics of, of like mixing really and like audio engineering, if you like. And um, like I said, been in studios and work with engineers and seen mixing desks and seen them working um and use mixing desks in a live setting for a band but never like um f to make my own music and so i had all this kind of latent knowledge anyway i realized i'm rambling on here but um 
I think for a long time I was like, right, I render everything. So I'd render everything, I'd bounce everything, I'd bounce all my drum racks. It would take me hours, you know, but it was like this kind of process that I developed where I rendered everything into audio. It was actually really helpful working that way. Um, and then I'd mix things, you know, I'd gain stage everything really, um, you know, real precision. And then over time, like just for the sake of speed, I kind of, I was like, I don't really have time to do that. So I'll just do, I'll just proceed without doing that. I'm comfortable with like volume balance and balancing and balancing elements between another. I think my ears developed a lot more and really I can't. I, I can't tell the difference or I, I don't think it's worth doing do it like if it was if it was um I don't know if it was a more I don't know if I would if I would do it if it was like an album or an, even an EP of mine or something unless I was working with an engineer who's like I was sending it to a mastering engineer I don't I don't know if I would bounce bounce it down um, I kind of like being able to tweak parameters across the mix into the master. That's that's another reason why I, why I don't bounce down. Because like I might want to like to me it's like it's it's all. If I'm doing it myself and I can adjust like certain things, I try and do it on the on the channel, you know, rather than going into the master. So I use the kind of master to reveal stuff like that sometimes. Yeah, data push. I was just curious. Yeah, I learned by trial and error by pressing records and hearing back from engine. And yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's where I learned about things being out of phase and compression limiting. I d phase is like a bit of a gray area for me, and I just kind of hope for the best with it. Um, as far as I know, I'm not. I'm not going to try and expound knowledge about about phase issues, but I try and like avoid and keep my bass in mono and and stuff like that and i feel like the the really kind of serious stuff yeah i wouldn't know it kind of i think the test is if like you play it in a club and people dance to it then does it it's fine isn't it <laughs> you know it's kind of it's so it's it's achieved it's fulfilled its um purpose hey not lex not lex note lex yeah, no data pushes. So I, when I when I first read your comment, it looked like um, it was written in shock, but it wasn't. Um, sometimes I, like I say, I have done done that just to go on a bit of a, um, a, a, a like a seg um, tangent. Yeah. Yes. Phase issues matter on vinyl alone. Heavy music can make the needle jump out of the groove. I've I've heard exactly that. Yeah, I've not had anything to cut to vinyl. So, if that happens, then hopefully I can kind of understand it a bit better. If there is any, any anything like that, you know. I think it's if you like put if you go too low on your reverbs and stuff, as in frequency wise, and your bass is too wide. Future world machines. I just use ozone when I'm mastering. I'm lazy. That's a good. That's totally good. I would use it if I had it. These are all kind of free or like tools that I've picked up over the. Oh, I really like this. Uh, oh, it's got saturation on it. I missed all of this. It's got glue compression and saturation. The black box analog design. <laughs> I think for like the sake of time, I kind of just like did all this and then sent it and then lived with it for a couple of days and was like, actually sounds all right. So uh, well, I'll show you with, with it on and with it off. So I will just have to do some like gain compensation. That's what I'll have to do.
So I would just mix this into like into a lim push this into a limiter. Just going into a limiter. And that's my master. I think it's got like more like ch -ch -ch, it's got more like transient and kind of it's really it sounds like it's a bit more detailed than like if you just run it into a limiter where it starts to get a bit squashed it doesn't have any like clarity in the top or less so switch over So it's subtle, but it always is, really. Data pusher. I ruined the plate and test presses for that reason. Yeah, for that lesson. Engineer monophase for bass makes all the speakers drive like a piston in unison. Yeah. Nice. Nice analogy. Mastering is important for physical formats. Future world machines. Note Lex. Or not Lex. I find it hard, not Lex. I find it's harder. I find it's better to concentrate on creating new, fresh ideas than stressing about mix. Very, very, yeah. I applaud that. I applaud that for 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 real. It's it's. I think it's because like I was happy with my ideas and I was like, um, now I want to understand the next step because I didn't really know how to get them out to release them or like, um, I knew there was a gap and I wanted to close the gap. I wanted to understand what I d I wanted to understand what I didn't know. I wanted to learn essentially. Um, yeah, but that that's a very wise point. Yeah, it's all about having fun, enjoying the beauty of jungle. Indeed, yeah, for real. Do I check my lofts levels? You, um, so I don't worry about it actually. Like, uh, I did a chat with Ned Rush one of his first compress it like an idiot podcast type things and it was about mastering and nick um he's actually from mono mono audio and he he makes some uh t the tape device the opto compressor and the and the eq device that are available down below actually but he he's a mastering engineer and he was on that and we were talking about being penalized for going above you know, for ex excessive lofts. Um, and I, I was like, okay, like, you know, there's no way. It's like when I hear, when I hear like music that's like mine, like similar genres on Spotify or something, there's no way that is like minus 14 lofts or whatever. It hasn't been penalized. There's no way. I don't, I don't know how that's possible. And he was like, you know, everyone gets penalized by the same amount in like on, by streaming services. If, you know, if it's a similar genre. So if it like, you know, so at that point I stopped worrying about it because I was like, okay, well, it just doesn't matter really. I used to. And, um, I think just touching on, yeah, levels is cool. I think I've seen that. Just touch, going back to what like, uh, not Lex said about the ideas. It's like, I think all of these like really technical aspects and I'm talking personally as well that they're, they're like they're they're safety blankets really because as long as you have to worry about all this stuff you're never going to finish a track you're never going to put it out there because you're like oh well, like, the lofts are like minus I'm going to get penalized on Spotify or whatever it's like I think it's it's a safety mechanism to stop you put or at least for me for me and I'm sure there are other artists that can empathize with this that um 
it's as long as I have all these things to worry about, there's no way I could possibly put this track out, you know. And so, so I'm safe really from judgment of other people. Um, I think if you were doing this professionally for like Taylor Swift, you've got to worry about it. You know, it should that's that's serious money and things at stake there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, real date pusher. Yeah, it is all secondary. I think it's easy to latch onto it, you know, for a lot of producers and myself included for a long time, you know, which is why, you know, rendering down all the tracks and stuff, it was like that took forever. So there was a nice period where I didn't have to release any music and have people listen to it and not care about it, which is really what was, I think, was the real issue, you know, doing that process. But I learned a lot doing that, learned a lot doing that, doing that. I think when you render stuff down to audio in your tracks, it's um it's a great like, okay, the track is done now, the track is done, I'm not going back from this step. And then it is about kind of like and then I realised that okay, maybe the idea is just not good, you know, like a a good mix won't fix a bad track. Um but yeah, I just did that. I I thought um, you know, sometimes when you do the, these things our colleges might have mastered it, but that would have been a huge t- a task, really. I mean, I remember when I did it, like, there are probably things that I would, the the the, the, ba- the trade-off as well is that, like, I probably sank about eight hours into this tune after that initial, like, first idea, and so I did, I did probably kind of like a four-hour session, and then a five-hour stint, maybe not that long, but by the end of that, like, I didn't want to listen to the track again, really, for at least, apart from to check that it was kind of okay, but I didn't, I didn't want to work on it again for a while, you know, so, and there was a deadline and turnaround, so I knew that my mix just had to be, as long as it was okay, that was, that was fine, it was going out the door. Um, Alex Wilson, best way to improve is to finish tunes and get them out there and see what feedback comes back. Very true. There's something... You've got to, you know, you've got to kind of close that feedback loop. You know, if you want to finish more tunes or you want to make better tunes, which involves finishing tunes, then you've got to get better at finishing stuff. Yeah, I completely agree. I think like release before you're ready release before you're ready and and like release music that's got mistakes in it to your ears because i think it's a good like and see what people think of it chances are they'll still you know if it's a good tune they'll st- even if there's something you don't like in it that it'll it may resonate with people um so i think that's great Get, put music out there before you're ready to do it future world machines there's way too many mastering tutorials on youtube all saying different things you're very very right do you know i used to go to so uh alex yeah i'm hoping this gets released digitally to buy me too yeah Yeah, Future World Machines, there's way too many mastering tutorials on YouTube, all saying different things. I can, yeah, this, there, I can recommend, I learned a lot from The Recording Revolution. There's a channel called The Recording Revolution, and it was it was largely like audio engineering with real life instruments. Um, but I think there's something, you know, in terms of like, um, like balance and just balance with volume in a tune, it was really good for stuff like that, like all the basics and all of it could be applied to electronic music. I 
think getting better at mixing or getting better at like audio stuff is like all about listening. It's all about listening to other music and how it's put together and what you're what you're hearing. Being a good musician, being a good like producer, being a good instrumentalist, it's all about being a good listener. Yeah, too many producers make trying to make the perfect tune. That's like an interesting like perfection in music like if there was a perfect piece of music it would have to be absolute you know everyone would have to agree it was perfect and as of yet i don't think we're anywhere close to that are we you know Yeah, but I completely agree, Alex. It's like, um, it's more important that you be authentic than perfect. It's, you know, it's more important that you're just honestly you through your music, I think. And you're not, you're not making music that's not what you want to be making. Because that, that, like, people can, people can smell that a mile off. Data pusher. I obsess about having my room sound right and getting the perfect mix while writing a tune. That's interesting. And like, what do you think? I'm just thinking how how I'd respond to that. You know what? Um, if it is like if it is perfect and it, the mix is bang on like or what do you lose when it's not like that what do you lose when it's not like that not Lex it's hard because there's so much music with amazing production especially D&B and you want to reach that level but it takes a lot of time and dedication to learn the skills this is true this is very true I'd say it's more like um like I think it was you not like said it earlier but like definitely focus on the ideas really focus on all the things you're into like all the things that inspire you outside of music that's really you know where you that's where your voice comes from you know go and ha try and have new musical experiences or go to Go to things you wouldn't normally go to, like musically. I don't know. Trying to like broaden your musical horizons. I think that's more important than um, than being like technically proficient. But patience and persistence is necessary for any musical endeavor. Yeah, Sparky Up Tricks. The poem is never finished, only abandoned. I think the same goes for tunes. There's like another one like that, which is like an artist needs two people to um or is it artist requires three person um oh, i can't remember it now yeah uh, an artist requires two people to a great work of art requires two people to finish it one person to to do it and the other one to shoot them before they ruin it that's it. <laughs> Data pusher. I've completed songs and played them in clubs and it sounded like crap. Yeah, same. I've done many, many crap tunes. I should. I was, I was thinking I should do like try and find the, the worst stuff that I've made and uh, share it with everyone. I've been, but yeah, I think like, you know, I was writing music in bands from like 15, 16. So they were probably embarrassing. They were embarrassing. There was promise there though, I think, in some of the stuff. That's the thing is that if there's potential, then it's worth continuing with. Yeah, club, like getting good. Alex, club sound system is different to perfect monitoring setup. I think like if you can, if you can hear your music in a club environment, 
or on a really loud sound system that is like especially if it's the type of, you make this type of music that's an essential that's essential um an essential like part of the feedback loop because the way a sound system works in a club with lots of other people is not how you're hearing it at home you know the bass is like a force of nature and so it's kind of like and and as well as all the the sound the sound is a force of nature it's kind of getting good at um knowing what's going to read and translate on the loud sound system because not if you add all this stuff in like subtly it's it's not going to come through on a really loud rig Yeah, getting an accurate mix is a challenge, especially with drum and bass. Um, yeah. It totally is a science, yeah. <laughs> so I met up with some DJ friends who are a bit younger than me, and I was talking about, you know, going to university when there was no YouTube. No, like so production everything you didn't I wasn't even doing that and I was playing guitar then but you know you got these scraps of information I remember trying to make drum and bass on reason reason four or so I don't know what it would have been but like a cracked version of reason and I was like okay I understand the rhythm the like two-step rhythm but like the breakbeat thing I don't know they've got a sound in there that I don't have and I don't know where to get it and I didn't even know what it was you know like everything was just picked up second hand unless you knew someone who, who was already making it and I didn't you know I knew plenty of DJs but not producers at that time that would have been in like 2006 just making like little two-step patterns and trying to do bass things and I was into house then as well like tech house and minimal and stuff I tip very few sound systems do subtle have you seen like the Sinai sound or Sinai sound I saw I saw them at um, Tunnel Club in Birmingham and that that was the best club sound I've heard it was, it's like a dub system it was sick Cakewalk. I remember people talking about Cakewalk. I use Sony Acid on my like parents' computer. I used to like layer stuff up on there. That was like my first intro to into like computer music, and I was always interested in recording it. You know, like my um, dad had like a reel to reel, and I'd layer up. I I I feel like I've said this before, but I'd layer up guitar parts on it and stuff on his old Akai reel to reel tape recorder he showed me how to like overdub stuff on it so it's always interesting in that like compositional element <laughs> thanks imprint yeah cheers I guess I guess we're just chatting now so I just think like I just kept it rolling I don't I don't think there's anything that I haven't shown you from I think so much is in the arrangement with stuff like that, with stuff like this you know i love making minimal elements work really hard in that respect yeah oh, don't worry that's good. That's the whole, that's the whole point of doing this. It's, it's good to get. I, I like getting sidetracked. I'd rather this be about what you know. I'm, I'm, I'd rather it be useful for people and like worth people's time and actually helpful. Um, no. So I'm always happy to answer, go deep on questions like that. If anything, it really helps because it gives gives a. Otherwise, I'd just be doing making music, you know. So I appreciate I appreciate that. Do you know Notelex? I think even if you did, you'd probably. So I've got a friend who had a release on 
to Tom LK. He had a release on a Dead Man's Chess compilation recently uh, on Western Law Records. You know, really final release, really reputable, reputable, really sick. Like Jungle Label, everyone knows Western Law. Um, but I know he, I know he struggles. You know, it's all we talk about when we're together. You know, his music stuff. But I think it's like. I think wherever you're at in your musical journey, this is a constant. You'll never feel. You'll only know. You'll only be bothered about what you don't know, what you aren't doing. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to call it a night there actually, because I'm pretty sleepy now, pretty tired. I was shooting a video uh, first thing this morning, like very early. So cool. Well, I um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I tell you, I'm just going to thank all my Patreon supporters. Oh, there we go. There's Planetary Drift artwork. Thanks for everyone who's yet. Yeah, um, Sparky Optrix, I think you've stuck around for the whole t two hours. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone. And um, I think Gresh might have gone now, but thanks everyone who's uh, kind of gone the distance. I know it's a good stream when my voice goes, um, but thanks to all my uh, Patreon supporters. Tonton, I saw you on here earlier on. I realise you're a patron. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone uh, for supporting the channel on there. It really, really helps. Um, just always try to like to give a shout out at the end. Um, cool. Well, uh, I hope there's been some decent stuff in there. I'm going to have to watch back and watch like, all the vi visualizer stuff because I enjoyed it so much doing that. I wouldn't mind watching it. Yeah, cheers, Sparky Up Tricks. Data Pusher. Yeah, keep, just keep at it. Try not to get too bogged down in the room, in the mix and stuff. All right, well, enjoy your week. And I will be back on at the weekend. More to come on that soon. Um, but look out, look out for that. And then my streaming schedule is up now until like end of May too as well. So peace, Grush. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for staying around. Future World Machines, nice to see you on. Not Lex. Yeah, Knight, nice to see you on. Alex Wilson, thanks very much. Respect. Respect all. Big up. Right, cheers all. Cheers, folks. Have a good one.